Welcome to Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Keeping you informed on faith and family entertainment. Magic of love. Oh, we're rocking. What a way to go back to the 90s. All right. Are we, are we on already? Are we on? Back to the 90s. Who does not forget? I mean, who can forget? Flesh of My Flesh, the song that was played at Weddings for and still is for decades. J-E-S-U-S. I mean, those yeah. songs and more. Who are we going to have fun with today, Isaac? Who are we going to have fun Well, uh, of course, we're talking about the wonderful Leon Patillo. Let me make sure I set up all this here. Uh, hey. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you guys. <laughs> you know, hold, hold on just a second. Now, of course, Leon, uh, oh my gosh, he's had quite a career uh, anywhere from, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, you know, playing with Santana, being the lead singer for Santana. Um, mm. And then, uh, of course, a show that I had the privilege of directing, which was mm -hmm. uh, Leon, Leon Friends. and Friends, which was a fun yes. show because Leon had some amazing friends. You know what? Let's just go right on to him. Leon, welcome to <laughs> All right, you guys. How you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, speaking, nice. of friends, speaking of friends, he's an old friend. Forever. We've known Leon for years. So yeah. it's a nice time with you, Leon. Yeah, we go back to the 90s. That's that's a That was a special time, and we all were just budding, trying to figure out what we wanted to do for the Lord. And uh, oh. Oh, it, yeah. it was just a neat time, you know. So yeah, I'm, I'm thankful time. that you both are doing what you're doing now to – Continue the legacy. Uh, you, <laughs> well, you, of course, have had such an amazing career. Like I said, all the way back from the day your days in Santana, and then uh -huh. your days as just a very well-known Christian artist. Uh, then yeah. I, don't know, I don't know. You can tell us all about what you're doing now, and then a, an announcement about something coming up here in the near future. But why don't we yes. start? Why don't we start <clears throat> at the beginning? Which I don't know if it's Santana or if there's something prior to Santana. But just give us a little yeah. bit of, uh, of your journey into uh, into your life. Well, actually, I had a, a band back in the day called Leon's Creation, and we moved to, uh, we were in San Francisco, did a lot of concerts in San Francisco, and then we just kept saying, man, it'd be great if we could break into the industry. So we all said, well, okay, well, let's get a house down in uh, the valley, and they will all live in that house, and we'll see if we can make this thing happen. So we had a manager, and he was uh, actually working with some you know, top artists at the, at the time. And he said, well, let, let me put Leon's creation in front of some of these groups, you know, wherever we play, it was Rare Earth or War, or whoever was doing the concert, I would be the one uh, that would start off the concerts. And so that was good for a while. Then I got a call. My manager called me and said, you know, uh, I got a call today from Carlos Santana. And uh, he's, he heard your vocals and he wants you to come back to San Francisco wow. and do an album. I said, oh, man, I thought somebody was punking me. You know, back in the day, they used to have the cameras. They followed you around. So I said, I'm looking around for the cameras. And it was no joke. So I drove from L.A. up to Mill Valley. Uh, Carlos was actually uh, living at the top of a, a mountain, beautiful little castle house he had. And uh, his wife's name was Debbie. And so she and I went to school together. So when I came and knocked on the door, Debbie opened the door and I said, I thought she was the maid. I said, this couldn't be his wife. I said, she's got to be the maid. <laughs> but I didn't say that. <laughs> so I actually uh, gave her a hug and everything. And then Carlos came up behind me. Hey, man. I said, hey, Carlos. He said, have you met my wife? I said, oh, wife. I said, okay. I said, yeah. I, I said, we went to school together. So anyway, he took me downstairs to uh, his studio. And, um, you know, of course, the place is all like gold and platinum albums. And then he had incense burning. And so I, I was like, what is, what is all this incense down here? He said, well, I, I believe that's like prayers going up to God. I said, wow. <laughs> I, I know you could talk about God and rock and roll. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that was, so that was cool. So I went and uh, so we started doing all the songs, Black Magic Woman, Oye, oh, yeah, Como Va, Got to Change Your Evil Ways. And then I saw an organ over in the corner. I said, can I go play that? He said, oh, you play too? So I got on the organ, start playing and, uh, and singing. And he said, Leon, he said, we lost our lead vocalist, and he said, 
how would you like to be the next lead vocalist for the group? Wow. wow. I said, wow. What? Serious? <laughs> and so the, our first concert was, I don't know if you guys know this from back in the day, but there was uh, a stadium there in San Francisco called Keysar Stadium. And so that's where the 49ers play. And so he said, we got our first concert we're going to be at the Keysar Stadium. I said, Keysar Stadium? I had only sang for maybe 600 people at that point. <laughs> and so there was 60,000 wow. people in wow. this place, man. I, I was in such shock that I didn't even know if I was going to remember the words. And so we started Black Magic Woman, and uh, it, it comes to a stop, and then I'm still supposed to come in and sing. And I froze, man. I said, and then I came in with the words <laughs> and, and it became such a thing because the audience just went crazy. They thought that was a, a planned thing. Part of the song. And uh, <laughs> so we start doing that every night. So we get to one part, we stop and everybody go, what's going to happen? Gonna, I got a black magic. <laughs> and that's coming. So, so we just start doing that as, as a, a routine, as a regular thing. But anyway, as time went on, I was dating a girl in San Francisco. Her brother uh, was a Christian. So every time I come to the house, to see her, here come the brother. And I didn't care if I came front door, side door, back door. And then in San Francisco, you can go through the basement and come up the back door like that. And I, <laughs> I don't know what this, but this is like this guy was a butler. He just was always answering every door I came to. So finally he got me to a Bible study and that's where uh, I heard about the claims of Christ. And I knew from you know my earlier days that, yeah, okay, this, this is something I've heard about since my childhood. But I don't know if I can make a commitment. And that's what he was talking to me about, was making a commitment to Christ. I was like, I don't know if I could do that one. <laughs> but he kept telling me, he said, man, just, you know, just pray with me. You see God will make a change in your life. And it's right there in the driveway of his house on the corner of Hate and Ashbury with all the smells <laughs> of the oh. cannabis and everything. I had the top <laughs> down in my car and I, I was right there. We held hands and, and I made my commitment to Christ. That was 1974. Oh, wow. And so, of course, I went back to the Santana group and lit them up. I just I couldn't keep my mouth shut. So <laughs> uh, so years later, you know, we get around all these groups. We're out with Jimi Hendrix. We're out with the uh, all these people that, that were in the industry at, at that time. Um, even Earth, Wind & Fire, we went out with them for a season, took them over to Europe. And again, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. So I kept talking to everyone I got around about Christ. And so on one trip, Philip Bailey actually uh, made a recommitment to the Lord. He and Andrew Wilfolk and Larry Dunn. And it was just the neatest thing to see that happen. And that got me on the, on the road to, you know, preaching the gospel. And then you went, you went with Word Records, then you went, left Santana and went with Word Records in, I think, 79. Yes. Now, if anyone can remember Word Records, because <laughs> that was like what everyone was doing. For I know. Them. I know, right? Yeah, those were the days. <laughs> and yeah, they were, they were one of the first ones. Well, actually, um, who was first? Uh, Chuck Smith was the first one to grab a hold of me. He, um, uh, somebody introduced us and, and he told me, he said, I'm starting this new label called Maranatha Music. Maranatha, and yes. I'd love it if you'd come and maybe do something on that label for us. And so I did my first album, Dance Children Dance on Maranatha. And then we left there and uh, they said they didn't have the right dis uh, distribution and they couldn't get airplay and all that kind of stuff. So they said, well, let me let me call Word Records and see if they will you know, take you on. So Stan Moser from uh, Word Records, uh, we got a hold of each other and then the rest is history. That all the albums I did from then on was with Word. Now, yeah. <laughs> you have you have always been somewhat radical. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, oh, man. And, and you just, <laughs> Me? <laughs> and you just mentioned you just mentioned your first album was Dance Children Dance. Now, yeah, yeah. Back, back then, and I know because I grew up in the church, and I'm going to tell you, <laughs> dancing was a sin. Okay, I, yeah. I, 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 was, I was not, a, yeah, I was not allowed to go any of the, of the school dances. My parents oh, wow. would turn in their graves if they found out I was dancing. <laughs> yeah. They're not even in their graves yet, but they will be turning when I if I they find out I'm dancing. So, did yeah, you did yeah. you get any? pushback from the church people uh because of your style that was kind of out of the out of the pocket there a little bit yeah i got well <clears throat> chuck's pastor chuck was actually the was first uh first wall because i really had to kind of convince him that that was a thing for the youth 
And he just kept shaking his head. He said, Leon, I, you know how he talks. He has that voice like that. He goes, well, Leon, I don't know if we could do a Dance Children Dance album because that, <laughs> that, would, that would send things in a whole different direction than how I'm trying to uh, lead this church, you know. And so I, I, so I told him, I said, well, yeah, but there's a young side that really would enjoy that. So we got the Amazing Grace people. I said, now we need something on the dance tip for the youngsters. And so he yeah. said, well, okay, well, and he agreed to do it. And so we put the album out. And again, I couldn't do many churches. I had to do a lot of halls uh, in those days. So we do, I don't know, a Madison Square Garden. We do Radio City Music Hall. We do places like that uh, where we, we perform. Every once in a while, I could do a church, but they were kind of afraid to have me come because I might radicalize the church and everybody be up <laughs> dancing. So, <laughs> so it took a minute. It took, I think it wasn't until the 90s I was actually able to go into some of the churches and perform dance children dance but it's now it's the big it's not even a big thing right now my son right. gabriel who's in toby mac it's like they done took it to a whole nother <laughs> place now dance children dance don't even sound like nothing compared to what they're doing now so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah but it was radical at the time you're right isaac <laughs> and, and then what when did you okay i remember i was doing kkla back in the 90s and you were doing uh -huh. big concerts, and we were, I mean, you were in the concert mode, and there was big venues under the stars. You know, yes. You oh, you remember that? Yeah, yeah. We, you know, I, I, I think there was a, a period where we were kind of breaking out from uh, one side of the ministry to another. I just enjoyed uh, the changes that were happening at the time because it, it seemed to be something that we were getting into a natural yes. um, realm where people that weren't saved were coming. And that was kind of more my interest. I knew it was like Christians around, but I, I said, well, how are we really reaching the world? Are we doing anything that's gonna help people that are really struggling with stuff and don't have any due north, you know? And I thought yeah, this music is kind of giving everybody kind of like a, a, a due north, you know what I mean? So uh, that I started to enjoy uh, because I could see people that had question marks in their heart you know, coming forward at the end of the concert and, and making a uh, commitment to Christ. And, and I know when we get to heaven, that's what the Lord's going to ask us. Who you, who did you bring with you? <laughs> you know, so, and that, that, so that has become the theme of my life now since that time, since that, some of those outdoor concerts. And you're doing not only concerts, but you've got um, the SING <laughs> Foundation. You did Rise yes. Above Bullying. I mean, you're yes. doing things now that focus beyond just music and career for young people to really, again, connect with that younger generation. Yeah, yeah. Well, mom and dad, uh, we always had foster kids in the house. And so when I got out of Santana, that's the first thing I wanted to do was to try to hook up with uh, some sort of a situation like that where I could help kids. So 1985, I joined a group called Koninia Foster Homes out of Sacramento. And uh, you remember her, uh, Isaac, uh, Miriam Goldie, you remember her, right? Yes, and uh, sure so did. back in the day. Yeah. So yep. anyway, th that was just a, a, an awesome hookup. And through that, uh, I just I got baptized into doing something for kids. I just went, OK, well, I, I can't have them in my house because I'm all over the country. I don't know how I'm going to take care of you, but I said, but I can do something to kind of contribute to that. And so she said, well, when you do concerts, maybe we can put a table right next to your album table. And then, you know, people will come over and they can sign up, you know, uh, to, to take kids into their homes. And I said, that's great. So we've got, probably, I, at the, I just talked to her the other day. We've got thousands, thousands of kids in good homes uh, now over these years. And so it's just been a thing. Then we came here, uh, she retired. And uh, we came here to Vegas. I just figured, okay, well, if there's any messed up kids, they're gonna be in Vegas. <laughs> so we <laughs> moved here. Yeah, so, yeah, everybody messed up in this city. So 2011, we came here and um, we just started throwing our arms around the kids from eight to 16 year olds. They, they, the programs got canceled in the high schools. And so we decided, well, maybe we'll do something like an after school program. So we started having contests for the kids. And one of the Toyota dealerships in town got behind it. and. Uh, actually, he he cleared out his showroom and said, why don't you have the contest here? And so wow. it worked out great for him because all the kids and the parents would come. Parents would be looking around the cars. They'd buy cars. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and so it, did, it gave us a big space to, to do our thing. And so uh, anyway, that's that's been the deal. Then he passed away a year before the uh, pandemic. And so that really messed everything up. Uh, we just we kind of got disjointed. Uh, then, because uh, the other people in Toyota dealership didn't didn't get the same vision, 
But anyway, we, we're taking this to another level, which we're going to talk about, I'm sure, a little later. But uh, the during the pandemic, there I shouldn't be laughing, but it's the, the suicide rate went up 22 percent. Mm. And so I said, well, man, they're not even in school. How are they getting bullied? And found out they're getting bullied online. Mm. So I said, well, maybe if I do uh, something along those lines, uh, you know, maybe a movie or something like that, maybe we can reach those kids that are, are suicidal and, and give them a hug because we, we, everybody I talk to, nobody has any answers to how to deal with suicide. So yeah. I figured we'd right. go this, this route now. So that's the next the next move. <laughs> but, but Leon, we literally yes. we literally skipped through a part of your story that I think is very important <clears throat> because it speaks mm. a lot. It speaks a lot to your commitment to, to God and, and to what you believe he called you to do. And that is the fact mm. that you didn't stay with Santana uh, too much longer after you became a Christian, did you? Yeah, no, man, that was, and that was a hard move, man, because mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I felt the Lord telling me I needed to get out and get into ministry. And it's like, well, Lord, is, what does that mean? I mean, how, how am I going to live? How am I going to eat? And then he reminded me, he said, when you was a baby, did you worry about all that? He said, I had you then. Well, you couldn't do nothing. I had you when your head was done all like this. And you couldn't even hold your head up. He said, he, he said, I had you then. He said, I got you now. He said, don't worry about it. I got you. And so I went to Bill Graham. Bill Graham uh, is the one that did Woodstock. He was our manager, not Billy Graham, Bill Graham. Uh, but anyway, uh, I went to him and he's one of those guys that when he, when he talks to you, he... <laughs> He never, well, everything is four letter words. So I just said, I'm going to get a barrage when I talk to him. So I went and I, told him, I said, Bill, I got to get out of the group. The Lord's calling me in the, in the missionary work. And he said, well, we figured it's going to happen one day. The other one we decided to do, we're going to double your income. I said, double my income? I said, well, look, let me go home and pray about this for a minute. <laughs> so I went home, prayed, came back. And I said, Bill, I, I got to get out of the group. He said, Leon, we're going to give you more money. If that's what you need, more money, we're going to we'll triple your income. Wow. wow. My income. So, wow. I said, look here, let me go home and pray about this one more time. So I went <laughs> home and prayed, came back, and then he, he quadrupled my money. I was like, this is oh, crazy. Geez. So I went out to the car, and I said, Lord, I'm going to take this Bible, and I'm going to stick my hand in here. Whatever I come up with, I'm, I'm going to take that as a word from you, O oh Lord. And uh, so, you know, you know, Bible. So I stuck my hand and I thought this was maybe Deuteronomy 28, <laughs> somewhere like that. And I stuck my hand and slipped and I didn't know my Bible was upside down. But I took it and I said, uh oh, New Testament. And Judas went out and hung himself. I said, oh, oh no. I guess I'm supposed to get out the group. <laughs> and so that was my release. Uh, and uh, I left the group. And again, I didn't know what to do. Uh, Andre Crouch was the only one out. Him and Mahaley Jackson, those are the only ones that were that doing something out of, on the music tip. So I didn't know what I was going to do. So that's where that whole young, that dance children dance and all that came about. I said, well, let me see if I can bring something to the table. And it was actually in the middle of that whole Jesus revolution right. that we, we saw the movie because they didn't have me in it. But anyway, I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, well, that's what uh, when I said earlier, you went with Word with 1979, because that was Christian. And so you really did yeah. go over the, all the other way and brought yes. so much joy. And really, I mean, it'd be very hard if someone quadrupled your salary. That was, I know, that was, I that know. Was hard, Leon. I mean, that would be hard I for know, anybody. Man. But the commitment that you made and how God has blessed you. And look at you today. I mean, yeah. you're you know spreading the word, and and again, yes. not just to boomers or an older generation who grew up loving you too, but yeah. to the younger generation as well. Yeah. Well, I've gone from, uh, as they say, from Santana to Hosanna. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's a real deal, man. So, wow. And I'm I'm really I, actually I went and saw the movie. Uh, you know, Carlos got out a movie. Was well, not in the theaters now, but it was like a three day run he had of his documentary. And so to see my name up on the big screen, that was kind of interesting to, to see the history and stuff. And, and, uh, but that was all one, that was kind of one way linear that was just toward your people with, with music. Now we're going to try to get souls to heaven. That's a whole nother, uh, part of this music, uh, that I didn't realize was going to happen. And I'm really thankful that the Lord is using, uh, this music to do something eternal uh, in people's lives. That's a big deal. Right. What is one of your songs now that you love, that you love? We've talked about songs in the past. What, what is one of your favorites now that you love performing and people are gravitating to? You know, it's really funny. Uh, I have redone uh, A Thousand Years. 
I, I don't know if you remember that from from that movie. It was <laughs> it was a horror movie, but uh, about vampires. But I've actually flipped the song because wow. I realized that's what we're gonna do when we once we get saved and once we uh, take Jesus into our lives, we're gonna be around him for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I've re I've kind of redone the lyrics to kind of flip it over to those that get saved will be around them for a thousand years. And so that's my favorite song right now. So I just actually redid the words and did it at a festival uh, about two weeks ago. And everybody was just in shock. They would they heard the music. They went, what is he doing? Are you doing a vampire song? What's up? <laughs> so, and then I flipped the words and they just were like, wow, for a thousand years, we'll be around you for a thousand years. Yes. And so anyway, it was just it was just kind of neat. So that's that's the song, Holly, that oh, I'm wow. uh, oh, I love that. I love knowing that. that. I use that after yeah. the altar call. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. And you got married since and you got married since I met you or I mean knew you and you're that right? Yes, yes, that's right. I met a Filipino woman. We were on a on a cruise uh, with Miriam. Uh they actually took me on this cruise to see if we could talk about taking Cornelia Foster Homes to the next level. And um that was horrible, man. Single man on a cruise. I'm telling you, that <laughs> doesn't work very good. And I'm, you know, and I went over to the piano. I said, well, let me entertain myself because we hadn't started talking about uh, the foster home stuff yet. And so <laughs> I sat at the piano and here the dolphins are jumping out of the water. And then uh, I'm hearing Calypso music in the background. People are passing me with those little drinks with the umbrella in it. And I was like, oh, this is horrible. And so I just I had two words. I said, Lord, surprise me. And so I just continued playing at the piano. And then this guy came and sat down next to me and uh, we started singing together. I think I was doing a Bill Withers song, uh, Lean On Me or something I was singing. And he came and started singing with me. And I said, oh, well, you got a good voice. And then next thing I know, here comes this lady walking toward us. And he was Filipino, so she was Filipino. She was walking toward me. She kind of, her hair was kind of flopping from side to side. And she looked, you know, she, like she was in slow motion almost. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord. And I didn't see no rings and stuff. I said, hmm. <laughs> so she came over, we caught eyes, and then she, <laughs> she sat next to this guy. I said, oh, man, that's the husband. I said, forgive me, Lord. So anyway, we continued uh, singing. And then when they got up to leave, they introduced themselves as brother and sister. I said, uh huh. <laughs> I said, okay. So it was on, and it's been on since then. So it's been what twenty? Uh, how long we've been married? Twenty-four years now we've been married. So yeah, but it's uh, it's it's something, man. That for me, I'm telling you, cause with music and this life, I I can't. I, I have to have to be honest. You, as a musician, there is still that draw to go and do weird stuff with your life. You just especially if you're a musician, you're always having things attracted to you. And sometimes you're attracted to that thing too. Mm -hmm. So it, it's hard to kind of just say, okay, I'm just going to stick with this one situation. And so for 24 years, it's been just this one, which is for me, that's big. That's huge. <laughs> so yeah. no. so yeah. I'm thankful. And maybe because she's Filipino, I don't know. Cause her, they got a whole big family thing going on. And, and I've kind of learned to be, uh, m more one on one with people right. type of thing, you know, because usually as a musician, you're on stage and the people are out there. And it's not like you don't really get that kind of relationship stuff happening. So she's kind of drawn me into, you know, having a little bit more closer, uh, intimate relationships with people. So that's, that's kind of neat. Just works right into my. Uh, what I'm supposed to be as a Christian anyway, but it, 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 it really helped me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, Leon, we, we've, got, we've got like three minutes left. Why don't you tell oh. us a little bit about this new project that you're working on ah. and developing? Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, like I was saying, it's just it's hard to get into schools now. Some of them, they have a blockage, especially if you're going to talk about anything religious. You can't talk about nothing like that in, in schools. So um, during the pandemic, since the the uh, rate of suicide went up, I said maybe we can find a way to to get to those kids in another kind of venue. And so the whole idea of, of a movie came along. I said, man, this would be great. We have one girl here in town, fourteen year old girl. She's half white, half Filipino, struggling, man, struggling. A uh, little bit overweight. Uh, she stutters a little bit and just has problems with with. Anything's got to do with her uh, classmates and people around her. They're always teasing her. She goes to the cafeteria. They're tripping her. And she sometimes lands face down in her food and just all kind of stuff, all the way up to the point of suicide. 
so anyway, I've, I've kind of crafted the movie around her uh, and her struggles and how she gets over it. And for any of us that will be watching this movie, it's going to be like we're right alongside of her, just pushing her to, to try to get over this moment, get to this next moment, get to the next day, girl. Come on. So it's that sort of fight in the movie. Plus, or slash, coupled with how me and Renee met on a cruise. Oh, she was a I'm professional sorry. poker player. <laughs> <laughs> A professional poker player when we met. So it's like, how the poker player and a minister go have any kind of relationship at all? And so, you know, so we go through the whole story of how we, we got together. So it's going to be a great, it's going to be Cinderella-ish. It's uh, kind of a cross between um, Sound of Freedom and um, Jesus Revolution. It's kind of, but it's got a love story in it. Neither one of them had any love stories. So I'm, I'm going to bring a love story now to the, the Christian community. Sure. And so you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. so it's coming out uh, next year, not next year, uh, 25. It'll come out uh, February of 25. Well, yeah. we're going to have you back to talk more yes. about that. We'll do a whole show talking about the movie. And oh, good. You, okay, you know, great, Holly. Yeah, yeah, when it gets ready to come out, we'll have you back talking about that and really focus on that so that people then can go see it because it sounds like it's going to be great. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Now, how, you, people, how can people follow you now? Oh, you just go on leonpatillo.org. Uh, LeonPatillo.org and everything will pop up. We have a foundation called Sing, Save and Inspire the Next Generation. That's what Sing right. stands for. And so if you want to help out with the movie, we're moving, we've got the screenplay done now. And yes. so now we're moving into uh, raising money for the film itself. So they're thinking maybe somewhere between three and five million, you know, mm -hmm. to do it. So uh, we're getting investors uh, involved. And uh, I talked to Lionsgate yesterday and they're very excited and want to do it. So we'll, right. we'll see. We got a brother over there. So uh, a yeah, brother in the Lord is over okay. there. And I think he might, either he or Angel Studios, one of the two, mm -hmm. uh, both are, are interested. So we'll see which one will grab it and, and run with it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Friends of yours, Isaac. <laughs> 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 well, I tell you, uh, it's it's very exciting, and we of course are going to keep up with what you're doing. Uh, you and I have been friends, Holly and you, and have, in fact, Holly and you and me and you have been friends longer than Holly and I have been friends. Like, I mean, it, we go way oh, back. Oh, that's so, right. So this, yeah, is that's very, right. this is very exciting uh, to hear what you're doing. You're going from yeah. from from musician yes. from musician to movie producer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Lena, come see us. Come to Fort Worth and visit yes. the front of Fort Worth. Oh, I'd love to. Film something there. And, you know, yes. and like Isaac can come up and we can go to Fort Worth and party. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We, can, awesome. we, can, we, can, we can dance. We can dance. Children dance. We can dance. dance, children dance. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's there. beautiful. All right, thank well, you folks, guys for having yeah, me. Thank you for being on, man. Folks, thank you for tuning okay. in today. We've had a wonderful time. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.